random cat. Hi, I'm Dala, and today let's discuss hypermiling with the leaf. We're not just gonna talk about hypermiling today, I also have a new feature that ties nicely into this subject, but before I start to explain what the new feature is, we need to properly understand hypermiling first. Okay, so what is hypermiling? Basically, it is driving efficiently. Most of you are already doing this. On an older EV with limited range, you probably already try to squeeze out the maximum amount of range from a single charge. This is a big difference from hypermiling with an internal combustion engine. There you do it in order to save fuel. With an EV you do it in order to make the limited range more usable. How does it work? Let's look at the physics behind this. Most of you probably know a bit about rolling resistance and air drag. When you accelerate, you increase the power the motor delivers so that it overcomes the forces working in the opposite direction, these frictions. When you are just cruising at a fixed speed, the output of the motor exactly matches the resistances. Uh, this is starting to look like a boring physics lecture, so let's speed this up. Or actually, let's not speed this up. You might have noticed that the faster you go, the more things like air drag starts to impact your range. It requires significantly more power to drive a vehicle at 120 km per hour compared to 60 km per hour. For example, a Tesla Model 3 ran more than 1000 km with one battery charge. This was achieved with an average speed of 38 km per hour and the whole drive took around 30 hours. I think most of you aren't willing to travel around at such low speed, but thankfully there are other ways to improve. You can modify your vehicle a bit, uh, lowering the rolling resistances and or air drag. Let's look at some practical examples. There is a great Wikipedia page on rolling resistance, along with formulas on how to calculate these coefficients etc. But the gist of it is to tweak the type of wheel that you are using. Quick examples here would be to switch to smaller diameter wheels, use narrow tires, run higher tire pressures, using special low rolling resistance tires, and finally using friction tires instead of studded tires in the winter time. All of these things help and lower your rolling resistance. This is a fascinating subject and very worthwhile to invest some time into the next time it is time to replace your tires. Some of you with a keen eye might also have noticed that there is a big W in the formula above. Uh, this stands for weight, and this is also a nice hypermiling trick. By removing unnecessary stuff from your vehicle, you lower the weight of it, and this makes it more efficient. Removing stuff like tire irons, floor mats, interior pieces, junk, seats, etc. all affect the total vehicle weight. Another bonus is that your acceleration time will also be reduced when you drop the weight. But maybe don't go as far as to remove your rear bumper, that is a bit extreme. Let's look at some ways to improve the air drag. This is much harder compared to the rolling resistance, since most EV manufacturers are quite aware of the benefits here. Many early production EVs have a quite low drag coefficient from factory, just to make up for the small battery size. If we look at the leaf, it has an impressive drag coefficient of only 0.28. This is achieved with things such as the rear diffuser, having a smooth underbelly of the whole vehicle, and the wonky looking headlights up front. It all ties into a low drag coefficient. If you want to further improve on this, you can do a grill blocker. I have a link in the description to a 3D printable model for the Nissan leaf. Other than that, covering up the rear wheel arches is the only major thing you can do, and most people won't bother with this since it objectively makes the car look much worse. If we again look towards the wheels, having smooth wheel covers slash hubcaps also helps. If you look at the e-golf, 
It has a very distinct aluminium wheel set that are shaped in such a way that it lowers the amount of drag created by them spinning. If you have the standard Nissan Leaf wheels, you can also 3D print some inserts that makes them flatter and reduces energy consumption. I've also put a link to these in the description. Okay, now we are getting closer to what I actually wanted to talk about from the start. Let's look at a thought experiment. Say you are going to draw over a large hill. How should you approach it from an efficiency perspective? Should you have cruise control on? Should you try to maximize the region braking on the way down? Should you go as fast as possible? The answer might be surprising. First, let's discuss cruise control. It's actually really bad if you want to maximize your range, if you live in a place that isn't just flat empty roads. Cruise control hurts efficiency. You might have noticed that when you turn on cruise control, the gasometer on the leaf subtracts a few kilometers of range. This is because the vehicle knows that it's not efficient. Having cruise control on, you will constantly speed up and down slightly to maintain the desired speed. It is this slight region braking that occurs when you use cruise control that really kills the efficiency. But wait a minute. You have probably been told that regenerative braking is good. And that is correct. It is much better than friction braking. But you know what's even better than region braking? It's rolling. Also known as gliding. Region braking is only about 70% effective. So you gain an additional 30% energy back by slowing down with only rolling, compared to slowing down with region braking. But in practice, this is very hard to accomplish. Once your vehicle free rolls, it will barely slow down at all. Oh, and on the Nissan Leaf, it is not possible to do this glide free rolling. You can try to almost achieve it by balancing the accelerator pedal so that no power is taken from the battery and no power is put back into the battery, but it's very hard to do. Now that we know that cruise control and region braking isn't good for maximizing efficiency, we can revisit the hill climb example. I've ranked the different ways to climb the hill from worst to best from efficiency standpoint, and of course even better than my best one listed would be to further lower the speed and take the hill at an extremely low velocity, but uh, no one will do that. And this brings me to my real goal with this video. How do you glide with the Nissan Leaf? Depending on your model, you will have some different modes, such as D, B or Eco, with varying amounts of regenerative braking. But there is no option to turn it off completely. That is, until now. This Leaf, gracefully climbing Finland's longest bridge, the Raipalota Bridge, in the Quarken Archipelago to be more specific, is no ordinary Leaf. It has been equipped with a CAN bridge, allowing it to run many types of custom functionalities. Here it is operating in a state where region has been completely disabled, allowing it to hypermile extremely efficient under certain conditions. This mode, where region is completely disabled, is extremely useful when going up and down hills, when doing overtakes and when doing long distance driving. Another benefit of being able to turn off region braking is that you have a way to exercise the friction brakes. These brakes are on most leaves never used and risk rusting, dragging, wearing unevenly due to getting no use. By simply turning on the no region mode, you can exercise them and make them last way longer. In the next upcoming short video, I'll be making a guide for how to access this functionality. This region free mode will be available to all battery upgrade customers and also to all leaf enhancer customers. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this informative. 